Okay, so Assalamualaikum students. Okay, so we can learn the new chapter today, chapter 5, Water and Solution. Okay, so Water and Solution, we're going to look at what's the, what's the inside of the water and how it works as a universal solvent. Okay, so we look at this first slide first for chapter 5. Okay, the physical... Um, characteristic of a water. So water is a universal solvent. Okay, so I'm going to tell you later why is it a universal solvent and possesses unique physical characteristic. Okay, which is important for all living things to undergo various living processes. So water is a really important. Okay, it's a really important element. So water is a universal solvent. And it has unique physical characteristic which is important for all living things to undergo various living processes. Okay, that's why uh, not only not only human needs water, plant needs water, animals needs water. So this is the reason why water is a is a really important element. So for any universal solvent, it means that it can dissolve okay it can dissolve a lot of um substances okay for example water that it can dissolve salt it can dissolve sugar okay it can dissolve other materials or okay? other chemicals but not all okay not all liquid can act as a universal solvent only certain liquid can dissolve certain substance but for water, they are considered as a universal solvent because it can, it can dissolve a lot of substances. Okay, a lot of substances. But compared to other solvent, okay, they can't dissolve um, a lot of substances compared to water. Only a few substances. So that's why water is a universal solvent. So is water have unique physical characteristic that is needed for us, for us living things to undergo various living processes. Okay? So this water is a compound made up of oxygen and hydrogen element. So you really have to remember, in water we have H2O. Okay? So water actually, you can call them as H2O. So for some, sometimes in, a, in the foreign uh, country, for example, in the US or in America, sometimes they don't call it as water, they will call, can I have H2O please, okay? So, huh, H2O means water, okay? H2O means water. H2 means you have two. H-O means you only have one O. Okay, so we're going to look at this. Okay, why? Why water is considered as a universal solvent? We have to think why. Because it can dissolve more substances than any other liquid. So they are also liquids. Okay, in this, um, in this, in our earth, there are also various liquids other than um, water. But not all liquids can dissolve a lot of substances. Only a few. For example, if you have this. Um, solution, okay, this solution or the solvent A, it can only dissolve maybe 3, or sometimes you have the solvent B, for example, it can only dissolve 4, but for water, it can dissolve a lot more than 10, actually, okay, it can dissolve, water, it can dissolve um, sugar, it can dissolve salt, it can dissolve actually more than 10, even chemicals, okay, we can use um, chemicals, we can add water to chemicals. Okay, so this water acts as a universal solvent. They act as a universal solvent that not not more, not most uh, solvent can dissolve substances. Okay, and I also tell you water, in the water we have H2O. Okay, this means you have here, we have two Hydrogen and you have one oxygen. Okay, so here we have H two O. Okay, so this is one and we have one two. This is two. 
hydrogen and this why we call it as H2O H2O or here another H and another H okay here um bond okay it's considered as a covalent bond for oxygen okay so you have H2O remember water is also known as H2O so inside the water we have oxygen one oxygen and we have two molecules of high, two element of hydrogen okay so that's why it's it's known as h2o there are two hydrogen and one oxygen okay so you have to remember this is a really important um method that you have to remember they will usually ask you in the objective question okay h2o Better. Okay, then we look at the uh, physical characteristic. Okay, physical characteristic of water. Physical characteristic of a pure water that is really important for our in our in our life. Okay, for living processes, this physical characteristic of pure water is really important. Okay, so in water, it will boil at the temperature of hundred degree Celsius. So for example, if you have like a pot, then you have like some uh, and you put them on top of a stove, okay, fire. So this water inside of it, okay, when it start to bubble up, when it start to boiling, this means it is in 100 degree Celsius, okay. So for example, if you put them on the stove again, fire, okay, then you have this one pot, Fill with water. If this water start to bubble up, okay, start to boiling, then it is in 100 degree Celsius. Okay, the boiling point of a sub of a water, a pure water, is 100 degree Celsius. What does it mean by pure water? Is that it does not have any addition. Okay, it does not have any addition. You don't add any salt. You don't add any sugar or whatever. It does not have any addition of other substances, so it is pure. Okay, so you have this pure water, it will boil in 100 degree Celsius. Okay, and this melting point, okay, will be 0 degree Celsius. Is it, it's either melting point or um, freezing point. So this means if you put in the fridge, if it's 0 degree Celsius or um, negative one two three four this means it will freeze up okay so this this what it means by the freezing point of pure water okay 100 degrees celsius for it to boil zero degrees celsius for it to freeze or it to melt okay and also pure water does not have any color it is colorless Okay, it is colorless. If it's not colorless, if it's in a blue, or if it's a cloudy, it's in a, it's in a like a dirty brown, that means it is not pure. Okay, if it's colorless, no addition of salt, no addition of sugar, no addition of other colorings, this means it is a pure water. Okay, and also you have to remember their density. This is always, they will always ask you in the objective. Question. Okay, remember it's, it is only one gram um, volume. Okay, cm3 means their volume and gram means their density. Okay, so density you must have the you must have the mass and also the volume to get a density. So you must have gram and also cm negative three. Okay, cm negative three is the volume, gram is the mass. So you're gonna um you're gonna multiply gram and volume, you're gonna get then density. Okay, so you just have to remember the density of a water is one gram cm cube. Okay, so other physical characteristic of pure water, these are the most important. Okay, physical characteristic of pure water. It is not just important for human beings, it is also important for animals, okay? And also plant, okay? It's really important for uh, animals and also plant. Okay, 
So they have high surface tension and also they have high adhesive force. So they have high surface tension at the point collision and also they have high adhesive force. Okay. So this is the presence of cohesive force and also phenomenon of capillary action. Okay, so we're gonna look at this. So surface tension is gonna be this and adhesion adhesive force is gonna be this. So we're gonna discuss it one by one and we're gonna be um, discussing step of matter in the next video. Okay, so we're gonna discuss about the surface tension and also adhesion. So the first surface tension is the force of the hydrogen bond in water along the surface of water. Okay, the hydrogen bond on the top of the water are linked together like the ropes of a net. Some animals can distribute the weight properly and walk in. Two of the hydrogen bonds will break them like some water insects. Okay, this means if you remember inside the water we have H2O. Okay, and then how this bond um, between the molecules are looking like this. We have hydrogen and also oxygen. Okay, so when this hydrogen link together, okay, when this hydrogen link together, it will it will make like a carpet on the surface of the water. Okay, they much more provide any they the support. Okay, they the support. So when you when there is insect on top of the water, it will not fall inside of the water, but instead they can walk on top of this water because of the surface. Tension. So this means when you have this oxygen, hydrogen, you have link. Okay, you have link between this hydrogen. So when they have link, they act like a support in the water. So when animal as slight as this, okay, they can walk on the surface of the water without fall inside of it. Okay, because of the hydrogen bond between the H2O inside of a water. That's what surface tension means. They give you support. Okay, they give you support. So, for example, this animal can distribute its weight. You can put the weight here or here or here or here. So, it can distribute its weight and it will not fall inside the water. Okay, that's what means of surface tension. So, this surface tension is really important for this water. Strider. If they don't have surface tension, this means this water strider won't be able to live on the surface of the water. Why? If not, they will fall. Okay. So we need a surface tension for this kind of animal to survive. Okay. Other than surface tension, we also have high adhesive force, or to put adhesion. Okay. So this adhesion is the attractive force between two particles of different substances. For example, water molecule and a glass molecule. So this means we have two molecules inside. One is the water, so we have H2O molecule. And also at the outside, we have here the glass. Okay, so when this, um, okay, when this have attractive forces, glass and the H2O, okay, then you will have adhesion okay we have adhesion it will stick the water will be sticking on to the surface of the glass they are the attractive force they are tertarik they can tertarik um, molecule dalam glass to akan tertarik dengan molecule di dalam air so bila dia tertarik that's the reason why you have meniscus okay that's the reason why you have meniscus so when you want to look at your beaker uh, at your measuring Cylinder, you have to look at the meniscus. Okay, the reason why we have meniscus is because we have the attraction between this glass and the water inside. When you have molecule of water attracted to the molecule of the glass, then you will have adhesion. That's the reason why it's not going to be straight. You have meniscus. Right? The reason why is because 
we have adhesion between two particles of different substances. Particles of water and also particles of the mirror. Dia memang ada attractive forces. Dia melekat. Itulah dia jadi sengit. Okay, macam ni. Cengkung. Okay, another example like this. Plant. Okay, the reason how plant can obtain water. How plant bring, for example, here's a plant. And then these are the roots. Okay, so how this plant actually bring water from the soil to the tree, to the leaf. How? Okay, how they bring from the bottom against the gravity to the leaves, to the trees. How? It's by adhesion. Okay, so when there is um, attraction okay, between this soil, Attraction between the soil and the molecule of the water H2O inside the soil, then this plant will be able to bring it up to the leaves or to its branch or to its tree. Okay, that's the reason why kamu nampak sini dia mendekat. Okay, dia daripada bawah ni sebenarnya dia akan ke atas, atas, atas. Why? Dia ambil air tu daripada soil. Okay, they can ambil air to the soil, then they can bawa naik ke atas. If you already learned about plant, we have xylem, we have pollen. Okay, jadi they can hantar um, air tu naik ke atas. They can lekat, lekat, melekat, 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 attractive, right? So, they can attractive to each other. The plant and the water, the water will be attracted to the plant and we boleh bawa air tu naik ke atas, go to the leaves. Go to the branch, go to the other parts of the plant. Okay, that's the reason why they are melekat. So, when, contohnya, cuba lah kamu siram pokok. You will notice, okay, some water, they can stick. Okay, just stick on the, um, just stick on the leaves. Why? Because you have two particles with different substance. So, example, you have particles in the leaf and also you have particles in the water. So, that's the reason why it will stick on the leaf. Contohnya, kau pernah dengar embun pagi, gitu kan? This way, it will stick on the leaf. Why? Because it has attraction. It has attraction between two different substances, like the water and also the um, leaves, or the water and also the glass. Okay? So, if you have any question, if I'm too fast, then you can always repeat this video. If not, you can always ask me, okay? Then we're going to discuss about the next um video state of matter of water okay the second um part of this new chapter okay so i'm gonna give you another video for today